I'm Jim Kircher. We've got some stories about some pretty unexciting things, at least it might seem that way, a weed, a minnow, a sparrow. But for scientists, each of these organisms is essential to understanding what they're trying to understand. So we start with a very well-traveled weed. In its natural habitat, say growing in the cracks of sidewalks, the Arabidopsis plant is nothing to write home about. But scientists write all kinds of journal articles about this plant, and lately, a lot about what it does and does not do in space. The Arabidopsis is, you might say, the fruit fly of plant science, a favorite for all kinds of experiments. And that's why thousands of Arabidopsis seeds have traveled millions of miles orbiting the Earth on the International Space Station. Why? Well, if we want to travel to Mars or even grow things when we get there, we've still got a lot to learn about plants. It has to find the right side. Last year, we met Southern Illinois University professor Darren Lussie in his laboratory. He, with a collaborator at Ohio University, had designed an experiment that had been accepted by NASA. The scientists wanted to have Arabidopsis seeds sprout on the space station, just begin to grow uh -huh. in zero gravity, and then bring them back to look deep inside the cells. We want to find out what a plant thinks is happening to it in space. They had followed all of NASA's stringent requirements. They got the seeds packed up and delivered to the space station. And we have liftoff of SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon. The astronauts did the experiment and sent the seeds back. And they <clears throat> shipped them to my collaborator. So they put them on this giant FedEx truck. And the hilarious thing about this is when you look in the FedEx truck, that giant truck, that's the only thing that was in there, right? This huge <laughs> truck pulls up and this tiny little box is in the back of the whole truck. So and when they were unpacked and unfrozen, the seeds had sprouted and the scientists breathed a sigh of relief. It didn't fail. It did not fail. We were really happy about that. Right. So you got the stuff back that you wanted to get. Yes. The seedlings had sprouted. They had sprouted, yeah. And then you need to find out what's deep inside exactly. those little sprouts, right? Exactly. And the little sprouts were scraped off of these plates and ground up, and they had special tags put on them, and then we, it was called proteomic sequencing. They were looking for differences between the space seedlings and seedlings that sprouted on Earth under the exact same conditions, except there was gravity. Which genes were turned on or off? And how did that affect the production of two types of proteins in the cells? And? And <laughs> there's a bunch of proteins that get turned on and off in space that don't show up on Earth. So what we saw is that in the, so the soluble ones, those are the ones floating around in the liquid, there's 163 of those that are different in space than they are on Earth. And we saw for the membrane ones, there's 166 of those. And, and that's what them. you were looking for. You were looking to that's, see what difference does it make yes. to sprout in zero gravity or near zero gravity yes. compared to what would happen on Earth. Yeah, that's exactly right. So they're used to listening to gravity, and when it's gone, it kind of freaks them out a little bit, I think. So these are all the ways they're trying to cope with that. We, found, we basically did what we set out to do. And one of the main reasons we did this was so we could deposit all of these results in a database that NASA has called Gene Lab. And that allows all other researchers who are interested in this kind of thing to go and see our results. And then they can start looking at those 163 proteins that were changed. They might have a favorite one that they want to look at. So it opens it up for the research community to build on this research. So a lot of it was foundational for other people. Right here. Those who go on a long space a flight, say to Mars, are going to need fresh wall. and nutritious food. Over here. And a crop of lettuce has already been so grown on the space a station bit of a, and a eaten circle. by NASA astronauts. All right, come on But there's back. plenty there's more to, to be show done you. to improve the equipment and techniques and the understanding of what exactly is going on I know that inside there's some questions those about space plants. How to use the bathroom. You're probably still examining and some of this, but you've also probably starting to think, what would you like to do next? What would you like to send up on the, the International Space Station in, in, in the next step in this, this pursuit? So the next step is probably to pick some of our favorite genes from the list and then do what's called a gene knockout. So, find, so if gene X is really important, find a plant that doesn't have gene X. It's been kind of exciting, though, still. I mean, feeling, I mean it was exciting to get this accepted and into space, but you're actually 
doing what you set out to do. That must be pretty cool. It, we're, I'm actually, it's very cool, but I'm also very relieved because, <laughs> like, I mean, NASA spent a lot of money to make this happen. So my, my great fear was that, you know, I would send the plants up and then none of the seeds would germinate and we would come back down with just a bunch of seeds on Petri dishes, having wasted millions of dollars. And, and, and then you don't done. get back up yes, again. And then, <laughs> and then that is the last chance, yes. You screw it up once, you don't get to go again. So the fact that we did it and it worked, I was happy and relieved all at the same time. So yeah. now we're trying to build on that.